Yo, how did you fall for that, Shane? How did you take an Uber here from Queens to fall for that, Shane? (laughs) You guys are so fucking cool. Ah, geez. Here we go. Welcome back to another video, guys. Shout out to my ground level crew. I should probably apologize in advance because fuck me dead, this was cringe. And not just normal cringe. I'm talking leg slapping, arm grabbing, nipple squeezing cringe. The type of cringe that can only come out of the flagrant studios. But there was some educational value in this episode as well, because never has there been a more explicit example of funny versus cringe than when Shane Gillis joins Andrew Schultz and his boy band for a three hour sit down. But just before we get into this train wreck of a podcast, If you haven't already, join the Cringe Rebellion. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers and this video could be the one to get us over the line and off the ground level. And just a quick reminder that all clips used in this video are protected by the Fair Use Doctrine, safeguarded by Title 17 of the United States Code. Now, as for Andrew Schultz, he should probably stop drinking, especially in front of cameras when speaking into a microphone. The episode started out with a few questions about Shane's interest in history. For those of you who don't know, Shane uses historical events in his stand-up routines, and it's pretty fucking funny. So Schultze and his boy band ended up asking for Shane's take on British imperialism, especially considering Akash Singh has an Indian background. And Gillis just starts dropping bangers off the cuff. Take a look. Then what about British imperialism? Can you explain any of that for Akash? I would love that. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know uh, about the history. Yeah, I have no experience with that. <laughs> they turned India into a, like a Walmart for 400 years. <laughs> <laughs> for 400 years, it was a, <laughs> it was a company. <laughs> pretty good. Literally a it company. Was pretty good. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it was a company longer than America has been a country. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah, dude, a clearance sale. Yeah. yeah. Going out of business. <laughs> going, yeah. Fire yeah. sale, bro. It's a liquidation. Yeah. <laughs> and so here we have Gillis on a roll and Akash is getting a little bit butt hurt, probably because Gillis is bagging India and being funny at the same time. And to make matters even worse, Akash proves how much of a hack he is by not getting Shane's joke. <laughs> you guys love trains. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah, the- chicks on the internet. Is all of India autistic? <laughs> yeah. It might actually be. actually the most emotional, but I'm curious to know where really? you're going with this. Like, no, I just the love, train, they love, love trains, trains love, love the train. buying yeah. women on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. So then Akash is sitting there all butthurt, and his boy Schultze decides to lean in on the India jokes because Shane is making him look like a hack as well. But the difference is Schultze goes for the low blow. But thankfully, Gillis saves the day and makes everything funny again. Yo, how does Indian? How do Indians feel about them going to the moon and there still being people struggling? We're proud we made it to the moon. It's when you're on your way up, you're proud of everything, and then when you're at the top, you're not proud of anything. Oh, you so you're I mean? still in the stage yeah. where like you identify with all the greatness. Yeah, look happening. what we can do, man. We made it there. Now we can fix. We'll fix everything here too. But look what we can do. Now, and do, America's so yeah. spoiled. Now it's time for plumbing. The number of signs I space. Yo, now it's plumbing time. The number of signs I and I still could be wrong, but I saw signs all all over India that said to let T O L E T, and I was like, there's just random signs about like are they leasing apartments? And I was like, oh, toilet. Yeah, toilet. Oh fuck. Okay, let me break down what's happening here. This is just next level cringe. So most of you probably already realize what Akash is talking about. A sign that says to let is basically a sign advertising a lease or a rental property. It doesn't mean fucking toilet. It means it's available to rent. And even when they try to correct him, he still leans into it. And I mean, he's just way out of his depth in this conversation. It's like watching a bunch of schoolboys hanging out with their big brother and it just doesn't work. These guys are fucking hacks next to Shane Gillis. And, oh man, just watch how it pans out. It's just signs <laughs> like, hey, you need a shitter? Because I'll sell you one. Turn it. Nice. All over. Everywhere. But that's, we need toilets still to that point. Yeah. That I'm, am I wrong? No, that's a sale thing. 
No, it's not a skill. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is about to be historic. This is good. No. This is historic. <laughs> this is good. I said hold I could on. be wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> you're not. You're already moonwalking. It's not on. You won't see it on like a storefront. Yeah, You'll Don't see it. Take a picture it every, during an argument. It's everywhere <laughs> because that argue. means there's like that's for sale. Like you can what is lease. For sale? Too left. No, it's not yeah, at houses. No, it's not on. As I'm saying, it's not on houses. I still could be wrong, but it's random. Street corner, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, but but is there a number? No, yeah. it literally it? just says that. Too let, too let. What does too let mean? I don't even know who the fuck it's, you contact. It's well, literally it means like, oh yeah, this is for sale. Well, if I saw it on there. Windows, I'd be like, oh yeah, that must be a place that's available. Yeah, but you see that you see Where's that shit Shub? everywhere, like on buildings, Shub's on like signs knows. everywhere. Yo, get Shub. We need Shub. Listen, what I loved is your confidence going yeah, into that. Yeah. <laughs> that I said was I my favorite. Yeah, moon confidence. Yeah. You saw that? You did have moon confidence. Yeah, yeah. He had I said I could be wrong. Nah, he there's, started, there's he started no, moon walking. With. No explanation. <laughs> it just says two okay. left. Oh, yeah. shit. It's the least. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. To he doesn't even work it. That guy doesn't <laughs> work it. <laughs> that guy He's doesn't work it. Bro, what a dumbass. And he wasn't joking. That wasn't some bit. You can tell he legit thought it meant toilet. Fuck me dead. Seriously, how embarrassing is that? So then he goes from one bullshit take to another, and this one was really random. It came out of left field. National service. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> kind of what, caricature what of ourselves. Don't you, <laughs> don't awesome. you think, listen, I'm about to have a fucking epiphany. Like listen, you <laughs> don't you feel as if Every American should do some form of national service. But I do, I do like this idea. Like right out of high school, one year. One year, do something. I don't give a fuck. You can go look after, what was it that uh, Sebastian said? He was like, you don't necessarily have to do foreign. It doesn't have to be military. He's like, I don't support military service. But he was like, national service, working domestically within the United States, go repair a fucking you know, national park. Work for the park. Take all yeah. the people from Beverly Hills, make them work on the border wall. I believe that. Have them understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah. But we, like, we know if that was in place, then all the rich people will have their kids just like, ah, oh, you just have to go to some easy place. They're always going to do that, but at least we get an idea of what... I think you should make some sacrifice to be part of the country. It's very easy just to just accept all the beautiful things that it has. And I think if, if you just put a fucking, what, a, a year? A year of your life? I wish I did it. I'm a, My dad did it. I didn't do it, and I regret it now at 39 years old. 18 and 19. 18, 19. So look, here's the thing. I don't actually have like a firm position on what he's saying here, but the fact that it's coming from him is just so fucking cringe. Schultz would literally be the last one to offer up his time in service of his country. He's a spoiled brat who likes to get high in the middle of the day and pretend that it's a podcast. And the funniest part is there's absolutely nothing stopping him from volunteering his time and efforts in service of his country. Like you said, it doesn't have to be in the armed services. It could just be domestic. Millions of Americans volunteer their time to their communities every week. So if you're so passionate about it, Schultz, what's stopping you from doing something about it right now? But seriously, imagine Schultz rocking up to the armed services to sign up, wearing his short skinny jeans and cute skate shoes. Well, these days, maybe they would sign him up. He's probably onto something here. But anyway, after all that, he tries to pin down Gillis for being a diva. And I thought this bit was really telling because instead of outing Shane Gillis for being a princess, what it really showed us is just how petty Schultz and his crew really are. Basically, they're trying to get Gillis to admit to being demanding and it kind of backfires on them. What is your one bougie thing? What is your one thing that it's oh, that's like? That's a great question. Yeah, I'm for a you. little bit. I'm a little bit like I wouldn't want people to know. Yeah. I'm a little bit. I don't care like, they know. I have first class flights have to do first class, yeah. so you can read your Steinbeck. I was really impressed with that. <sighs> Shut up. Oh, okay, what's right what's there. the right. other bougie expense? Is it like okay? Obviously, the comfort of first class. Is there anything? Is there anything you're like? Ugh, I didn't know that I was this guy, and then you experience it, and you're like, now I kind of have to be this guy. No. Really. No. Hotels, you don't care? You don't have to stay at a nice hotel? Hotels. Okay, so we're going to find a lot of things. a little. But no, it, it was like, I thought I was like, I don't care where I stay. And then I got in the worst hotel possible. And it's like, I, no. I like called my manager and I was like, all right, can we, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking like the worst hotel possible. Yeah. yeah. Like motel, like you park in front of the fucking. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what do you demand right now? Nothing. You have a rider? No. 
Any I can't, snack. I can't, any snack, no, I can't figure you out. In my green room, I get fruit and hummus. Hummus is good. And Solid. Bud Light and White Claws. Solid. But mm. that was just my manager came up with that. I <laughs> cannot figure it out. That's a writer. I can't figure you out. Why? That is a writer, but he said he didn't come up I with it. I didn't do that. She just did it. She yeah. knows. But it's a nice, it's a nice luxury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, but it's like. What else? You want steak dinners and shit. Well, I want chicken and steak. Because no, I don't want to just eat fucking. Yeah, you see the I don't want to eat pizza. Yeah. You That's see it. the difference between hummus and white claws. What do we start with? Between we have a fucking steak. hummus platter that's hummus there platter. all the time. No, you start with that. His whole rider is just hummus <laughs> and white claw. So it's a, there's a difference. So what are you ordering for dinner? That's what I'm saying. It's like I'm. That shit is crazy. What's going on here? What are we talking about? Nothing. There's got to be one. You've got some money. No, 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 there's no. got to be a thing. It's, he's embarrassed to be remotely demanding. I would never be demanding. See. Out of shame. Ever. Now, now. The perception, I mean, hopefully I get there. The perception of bougie <laughs> is worse like, than the perception like of gay. Oh, that's shame. interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so. This is the, I have one pair of pants. These shoes stink. I've been wearing them for three months. <laughs> that's a three-month white sneaker? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, like I said, they just expose themselves. Shane Gillis is just a regular dude whose career really took off after he got sacked from SNL and Rogan helped him get his name out there. But he's always been funny and he's always had a strong following, so he probably would have made it big anyway, even without Rogan. You can tell he's just an ordinary guy. He's not a pretentious fucking tryhard like Schultze and his boy band. If Shane's earning good money and he's flying around a lot, there's nothing wrong with flying first class. It's his money, so who gives a fuck? But nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, flies quite like Bert Kreischer does. I remember one time we pulled up and the, the line for the line to get to the airport was I'm talking it looked like like someone lit up a Christmas tree house. Like like they all the, it's just a string of lines, right? Mm -hmm. It was Bunch all of animals. Way out of Sepulveda. And we pulled around and we missed all of it. We pulled to the other totally other side of the airport. You go in, you sit down, you have a few drinks, you get there an hour and a half. You can get there five minutes before your flight and then just they'll grab they'll you. They'll escort you. They take your ID, they check you in, they check all your luggage, then they grab you, they take you through their TSA. So it's, it, there's no line. It's not a line at all. You walk in, they put you in a, a 7 Series BMW or a Escalade and they drive you on the tarmac over next to the plane and then you enter the stairs. You know when you, you check your bags and then they, and then when you land, they bring them up that flight of stairs yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk up those stairs and you board the plane last. It is gangster damn so now, if there's a nuclear war you're going to be in the bunker you're one oh, of those people oh yeah no listen here's the deal do you know who it's killed jfk <laughs> but yeah back to andrew schultz yet again we have another example of a cringe comedian with zero self-awareness andrew went from professing his love for his country and declaring his regret for not having served when he was younger to grilling Shane Gillis for not being a demanding diva like he is. The guy's all over the place. He's out of control. And it reminded me of that time where Louis C.K. called out Shane Gillis for doing too many ad reads and then switching the podcast over to Patreon to make people pay. I played this clip in a previous video as an outro, but I didn't actually talk about it. So here, take a look. So let's do this. Yeah. We're going to read some ads. Okay. All right. And then we're going to switch over to the Patreon for the last part. So join the Patreon if you want. Why do you switch? Why are you making them go on Patreon? That way. That it, way what? It's good. You make, you need the money? Yes. Really? The no, ads and the Patreon? You're going to make them listen to ads Hold and on. then switch to Patreon? Hold on. This is, look. This is like when I watch a fucking fight on DAZN, which I pay DAZN. for, and there's a fucking ad between the rounds. Hold on. Is it subscription or is it fucking Holy ad? shit, there's three ads. Hold on. Re you, yeah, but well, you don't have to put this on Patreon. We you do. don't have to. You don't need the it's money, not for me. Shane. Matt, Matt and Sean need it. I'll, how Matt's much, got a family. How much do you get for Patreon? How much really? You, I'll tell you. you tell me. How right much now? do you think you'll make on this on Patreon? If... If one thousand people join, yeah, the Patreon, that's it's five dollars a month. It's five thousand dollars a month, and then you Times think they 12. just stay there, and then yeah, they like it. But you think good. a thousand people will join your Patreon? Five thousand new people <laughs> because of this? Uh, I wish you would stop this, guys. 
I will support pay the greatest him history podcast. Five thousand dollars a month <laughs> Guys, to keep this content. Free. This could be the greatest history podcast of all time. And thank Christ, it's it's brought to you by Manscaped. What are you betting on, Sean? What have you won lately? Uh, I should have bet on Cheeto Vera versus. Uh, yeah, this is yeah. such a mistake to try to do ads at the end it's of okay. this. He probably fucking hates us now. I know. We look like fools. Uh, you have no idea. I think Louis was a bit harsh on Gillis here. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing ad reads. Sometimes they get a bit too much and go on forever. But if it's free content, I guess you should expect to see some ads. But Louis's definitely right about there being too many ads when paying for a subscription service. If I'm watching a pay-per-view main event like UFC or a boxing bout or whatever, I don't want to see any fucking ads. That shit is expensive as it is. They should be making enough money off it without having to play heaps of ads. But the more interesting takeaway for me after seeing that Louis C.K. clip was that Gillis was more angry at himself than anything. He straight away blamed himself and internalized it. So yeah, again, I don't think he really did anything wrong there. Louis C.K. is probably just old school like that, but it definitely shows that Shane has self-awareness and he didn't externalize the blame like most of these Muppets do. He took it on the chin and I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. As you can tell, I'm a fan of Shane Gillis. He doesn't overhype everything like Schultz does and all these other Muppets who came up through Rogan's nutsack. And for me, that's the difference between being funny and being cringe. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I'll pin the best comment as usual. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and don't forget to become a subscriber so you don't miss out on my latest videos. I'll chat to you guys soon. See you in the next one. And if I ever Whatever. fall in love again, yeah. I will be sure that the lady is a friend. And if I wow. ever fall in love so true, what a mistake. Yeah. I will be sure that the fans yeah. <laughs> like you. I hate you guys. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha